And welcome to episode 87 and a half of Above Replacement Radio, a little uh, Hall of Fame result reaction. This has been a pretty special Hall of Fame year for us because we've done 10 bubble cases, dedicated a lot of time for it. So we're uh, reacting to the results. Brian Kenny and Tim Mead right on the television screen now. So here we go. They, By the way, Marcus Simeon just signed with the Blue Jays like like literally two minutes ago. I, I don't yeah, know what happened last year with the Ozuna, I think. Yeah, I don't know where he fits into that lineup, but we'll, I guess we'll cover that later. Um, well, we've, we've had 206 ballots released. We just had our seventh blank ballot like minutes ago. Uh, yeah, there's all the people who we've lost for the last year. And um, like I said, I don't think anyone's getting in. I think Schilling is going to have like around high 60s. My prediction was 68.7%. Um, and I do think Burley gets – like he stays. I think he gets to 6.1% around. He's only got four more votes to, to get, so I think he'll be fine. Uh, yeah, yeah. For sure, yeah, I would agree. I would agree with it. Like, if if I had to make predictions, it would probably be around the same percentage as, as yours. My my shilling prediction was sixty seven point six. For some reason, that just seems very very realistic on my end. Uh, they're going over the lost Hall of Famers of the past year. Yeah, including uh. Ten. And it's been nine months since we lost Al Kaline, who was the first of which. Yeah, yeah. Because I remember um, the Al Kaline death coincided right. with our first history episode. So, all right, here we go. Tim Mead making announcements. There it is. Goose egg. Well, there it is. Schilling got 71.1? So Schilling did gain votes. Schilling did gain. Okay, that's actually not too bad. That's actually very surprising. Um, no, Schilling's got one more year. So he gained four in total on the year. Okay, can we see the full results? <laughs> did what did Bonds and Clements get? Did they did Roland get fifty percent? How much did Vizquel drop by? So all 10, I could, I mean, theoretically, I could have the exact same ballot next year. Yeah, it's very possible. Dude, Kurt Schilling could have shared a stage with Derek Jeter. And we, we missed uh, the opportunity, unless there's no, unless there's no induction next year as well. I mean, I wish, I, I don't think there would have been, Schilling and, his, Schilling and Jeter didn't really have any. Anything. This makes me feel a lot better about Schilling's chances next year, though. Like, I thought he was going to lose votes, but he gained a few. All right, so yeah. Bonds and Clemens got, they only gained 1%. Vizquel almost hovered 50, only lost 3%. Roland got to 52. Billy Wagner had a good game. Todd Helton had a good game. Gary Sheffield had a, had a big game. Andrew Jones got all the way up to 33. Um, so Bonds and Clemens are going to have to gain about – uh, thirteen percent next year. Fourteen percent, yeah. Uh, Vizquel went down, but that is kind of pending what happens next year. Um, interesting, interesting. Yeah, biggest. Wagner's close to Billy Wagner's close to fifty, though. He's gonna get fifty next year in his seventh year on the ballot. Yeah. So biggest surprises for me are. 
Schilling gaining votes and Viscal only dropping off three percent. Yeah. Although, although Actually, were... I think Viscal Viscal did better on the private ballots than he did on the public ballots. Of course. Well, of course. <laughs> yeah, that makes that makes sense. Yeah. That's how it always is. So he's the only person that did that. Bonds and Clemens. I was hoping they would get to sixty-three. Tim Hudson stayed on. Wow. And so did Tory Hunter. Burley got to eleven. I'm kind of glad Tim, Hudson stayed on. Tim Hudson, by fractions, stayed on the ballot. So it's Bobby Abreu. I mean, he had 57 career B war. I think he should. I'm surprised Tory Hunter got more than Bobby Abreu. Burley uh, got 11%. Right. Good for him. That's actually not a bad debut. Um, and then Latroy Hawkins. Actually, I think Latroy Hawkins got more votes than just Bob Nightingale. Barry Zito got a vote, and then the rest were shut out. Wow, Tim Hudson just barely stays on. Abre- Abreu only at a 8.7%. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, interesting. I'm going to admit, I didn't think Schilling was going to gain votes. I thought he was going to be high 60s. But, um, I mean, I mentioned this before. This makes That makes me feel a lot better about him next year. He's going to need to gain 16 votes. Um, where obviously A-Rod and Ortiz are going to be headlining the first years uh, in 2022. Um, I don't know what the attitude towards A-Rod is going to be like because he is a different type of steroid guy than everybody else. And Bonds and Clemens are going to need to gain 14%. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, let me see. Well, I think good news is... Like uh, like Kurt Schilling. Last time, last time Kurt Schilling had a slow year it was because he lost votes. This year he just flat out. Like the last time he lost votes, it was like he lost. This was just a small game. I think he gained a considerable amount of votes and lost a considerable amount of votes, but netted a uh, positive. Um, with Schilling, I think. <laughs> It is funny to mention it because it's such a such a weird thing to bring up with Hall of Fame. Is I don't know if he's really on Twitter anymore. I think he like switched to Parlor, and no one, no journalist. Well, I just, didn't, didn't that go down completely? Um, it got picked up by a uh, a foreign um, platform, so it's back on. I think fourteen blank ballots in total. That's. Um, I cannot believe Tim Hudson stayed on. So I guess uh, and uh, yeah, Tim Hudson. He's gonna. We're gonna have to do a bubble case for him next year, I guess. Yeah, we considered doing one for him this year, but there was not enough time. Yeah, there were, there were not enough. Uh, he wasn't in. You know, the top. 10 people or subjects we were uh going over but yeah i mean like hudson um he's kind of comparable to burley in a way maybe not in terms of the 200 inning seasons but um you know hudson had a uh, a better peak war than uh than mark burley and yeah. his his uh overall wins above replacement was only about two below uh, Mark Burley. So I think if you're a Mark Burley fan, you know, I'm not saying you should be a Tim Hudson fan, but Tim Hudson should be in consideration as well. Yeah. Um, this makes me really get glad that Bobby Abreu stayed on the ballot last year too. I do. Yes. I, I agree with that. And he just, I mean, he was close to falling off as well. He had 5.5%. Yeah. Um, uh, so, Roland, let's talk about Roland because he had a huge gain. What was he at last year? Like thirty-five percent, I think. Um, let me look up Roland. I'm pretty sure thirty-five point three percent of the ballot last year. Uh, that seems right. Uh, and he got fifty-two percent this year, which is really good. Um, I'd say I'd say I'd give it two more years with Scott Roland. 
35.3 last year. Yep. That's correct. Nailed that. And he broke, um, 50, he broke 50 this year, right? He broke 50. And then Todd Helton went from 29 to 40, uh, 42, I think. Yeah, he's he's gained, I think, like 13 each year incre- incrementally in the past couple years. Yeah. Um, so, I can't. Omar did better on the on the private ballots than he did on the public ballots, which is hilarious to me. Uh, he and by the way, it wasn't even close. Like he was he was at like low forty percent, so he probably got sixty percent of the private ballots. Well, I mean, it makes so much sense. I mean, the the ones that are popular among the you know baseball community that's paying attention, you know, they get significant drops, and then the ones that are kind of slammed against by the people that are you know active in the baseball community you know they get they get significant increases because people do not like the criticism that comes with voting for a guy with an 82 ops plus who never led among shortstops and defensive wins above replacement exactly uh andrew jones got some very real consideration for the first time this year he completely skipped the 20s he went from 19.4 to uh like 30 something percent 33.9 i believe 33.9 yeah that's that's a third um Sheffield he had a drop like I was expecting 40 percent but uh where was he at last year um Sheffield I think it was at 30 percent okay so right he gained around. like 10 ish percent um man I was really hoping that Bonds and Clemens would crack 63 uh they did not even get to 62 um yeah I mean like unless there really is unless that can like sort of theory is true that the writers are making bonds and clemens sweated out for i don't think they are though i really don't think they are if that unless that's true it doesn't seem like they will be getting in because it seems like the writers that believe they are hall of fame worthy have have voted for it like all of them have voted for them and the ones who do not believe they are hall of fame worthy do not so I guess this is a good time to explain the process by which what would happen with Bonds and Clemens next year uh, in the event that they eventually do not get in via BBWAA, and they obviously have one more year to do so. So you obviously know that once someone maxes out on ballots, they leave the ballot without getting in. Uh, sometimes, in a lot of cases, they end up going on a, uh, a separate committee uh, made up of 16 individuals that have been in and around the game throughout their careers. And the era that they will be going on is uh, the Today's Game Era Committee. Uh, that is the committee that is infamous for voting in Harold Baines, uh, for better or for worse. And um, I mean, I know, but, you know, they've they've been responsible for like good for a lot of good. Yeah. Uh, like Lee Smith, like Lee Smith, Jim Bunning, I remember. Mm-hmm. You know, not when I was alive, it happened in 1994, but Jim Bunning was a good one where he got like 73% his last year and then eventually he was voted in. So with that being said, they go on the Today's Game Era Committee because that that ballot is made up of players whose greatest contributions to the game are after the year 1988. And obviously Bonds and Clemens contributed uh, at their peaks after that year. They were barely in the game at that point. So... Uh, they're going to go on that ballot, and there are – Chris, can you pull up the, the screenshot that I sent you of the people that voted on it most recently? Um, I took a picture on my phone. Um, are you using that? No. Or – no, but – Okay. Um, I think you can share your screen if you have it. I just got to pull up. I don't remember how I found it, though. I need to find this. Um, but anyway, I'll, I'll try to continue. But um, anyway, they're going to get on the Today's Game Era committee. There's 16 people on that committee, and they need to get 12 of those votes uh, to get into the Hall of Fame. It's an election that happens each December. Uh, they were supposed to vote this winter, but it was postponed because of COVID. And the next time they vote, uh, they convene in the winter of 2022 to vote for the class of 2023. If you're keeping track, that is the very election cycle after Bonds and Clemens uh, hop off the ballot. So 
they're going to get another chance almost pretty much immediately in the very next year. And after that, I believe it's every like three or four years, they have another chance. So um, after that, their next opportunity, if they don't get in, would be in the fall of 2024 to try and get in in 2025. And then from there, it sort of rotates between uh, the modern baseball committee, formerly known as the veterans committee, the golden days era committee and the, uh, the early baseball committee. So uh, hope is not lost if Bonds and Clemens don't get in next year. I think Schilling is going to get in next year, but I also do think that he would have a much better time on a veterans committee or a today's game era committee than Bonds and Clemens are just by the nature of those people. Um, but yeah, that's what's going to, uh, that's what's hopefully going to happen. That's hopefully how they get in, in the event that they don't gain 14% of the vote next year, which I don't think they will. Um, yeah, that's, and we'll definitely get into that. And I think next year for our, um, if we ever, if we do Hall of Fame breakdowns, I think we should probably get into those, you know, secondary committees. Mm -hmm. um, maybe we won't do as many because, you know, definitely there's some players on those committees that definitely don't really have much of a place on there. So we won't do all of them, but, uh, but yeah, um, I guess to uh, refresh the listeners, the rankings in terms of percentages for the Hall of Fame, Kurt Schilling had the most votes. Barry Bonds ranked number two, Clemens number three, then Scott Rowland, Omar Vizquel, Billy Wagner, Todd Helton, Gary Sheffield, Andrew Jones, Jeff Kent, Manny Ramirez, Sammy Sosa, Andy Pettit, Mark Burley, Tory Hunter, Bobby Abreu, and Tib Tim Hudson will all be staying on the ballot next year. Uh, no one's, no one was on their tenth ballot this year, so so everyone, all those people will be coming back. Everyone will be coming back, and uh, say goodbye to Ramos Ramirez, Latroy Hawkins, Barry Zito, AJ Burnett, Michael Kadire, Dan Heron, and Nick Swisher and Shane Victorino. I can't believe the flying Hawaiian didn't get in. Yeah, yeah, I can't, I can't. You know, Dan Heron with his World Series resume. Yeah, surprised that he was not able to get one single vote. It's a shame. Uh, at least Hawkins Ramos got Ramos two votes. Get a couple though. Ramos Ramirez got one percent, I think. Hawkins Hawkins got two votes. Uh, Ramos Ramirez got four. And it seems as though. Or I don't know. It, it seems as though there were exactly 400 ballots because Aramis Ramirez got 1.0%. So that would be four out of 400. But who knows? Um, um, I'm, I'm going to put Roland. It's a lot to get in right now at some point. I'm just I'm going to do it right now. 52% after four years. That's usually good. Um, yeah, I, I think I'm very – now I'm – pretty confident Schilling is going to get in next year. I'm not I am too. one I'm not 100% for sure. It depends on what happens in the world and what he decides to to say. Like if he can just be quiet next year. But yeah. I which I certainly isn't a guarantee, but I still do think that he has a much better chance than what I would have predicted uh 30 minutes ago. Yeah, if the I think it's it has to do a lot with the state of the world and I feel like the state of the world will be so much better uh 12 months from now i would hope so um that's what it seems like and maybe people are going to be more chill about what someone says especially like um you know the biggest the biggest development in the hall of fame in the next 12 months might be uh a man's twitter activity and whether he will be on the app or whether he will i hope jack banton yeah <laughs> honestly i hope he does yeah like, that would be Mr. that would be a blessing to kurt schilling's hall of fame chances yeah <laughs> mr D imagine jack yeah jack dorsey was like he's like a big hall of fame guy and he's like you know what i'm gonna cut the cord myself yeah we're like, gonna get this man enough. in i've had enough of you and then not getting in and then immediately after induction he brings it back he's like all right go to town if you want to um but yeah that's that's about it 
that's about it. It it was sort of what we thought it was. We we thought that no one would be. Uh, we knew that no one would be inducted. We knew no one would be inducted. Big surprise of Kurt Schilling gaining votes. Um, yeah. We're kind of. We're kind of. Um, we kind of knew what was going to happen with Bonds and Clemens. Not nothing really. No movement really. What in either direction? Did they wait? Hold on. Did Bonds and Clemens have the same amount? Because I, I think this might be like the no like the Bond, first Bonds got one more than Clemens. Bonds did get one more. Okay. In a letter, uh, thanks, thanks, thanks John Heyman, for dropping Clemens. Mm. Okay, this is coming in from uh, from Ian Brown of MLB.com. Kurt Schilling wrote a letter to the Hall of Fame saying his preference would have been to go in as a Diamondback if he had been elected tonight. So, uh, I guess that's. I mean, if that you know, if that happens next year, you don't have to talk about that. Yeah, that's glad. I'm just glad there won't be like a Mike Mussina situation where he goes in with no hat, even though he should have went in with the Orioles. Um, yeah, uh, Shillian pitched like three and a half years with the Diamondbacks, but he had his best seasons. He had his two best seasons. Yeah, he got he played, um, he played seven and a half seasons with the Phillies and three and a half with the Diamondbacks. And then he played four with the I'm Red Sox. I still need to, I still want to try and find who's on the, who is on the, uh, the today's game era committee. Maybe he just has a good relationship with the Diamondbacks and, Maybe. you know, he won his world, he won his first world series there. So, and, you know, I would, as a Red Sox fan, I'm not that disappointed he didn't choose the Red Sox because he spent a brief, relatively brief amount of time there. But if I'm a Phillies fan, maybe I'm a little like, what's going on there? Because he pitched over he pitched over twice as many innings with the Phillies than the Diamondbacks. Um, yeah, he spent a lot more time in Philly. Yeah, maybe behind the scenes, Arizona is going to do more for him because he's already been not invited to like Red Sox events. By, okay. All by right. I've pulled it up. All right. So the following people uh, will be, v- are, were on the, on the committee that's going to be changed this year. Cause uh, some people are no longer with us, unfortunately, but this, these 16 individuals are voting uh, or were voting for the today's game era committee. The year that Lee Smith and Harold Baines got in, which was two cycles ago. Uh, Roberto Alomar, Bert Blylevin, Pat Gillick, Tony Larusa, Greg Maddox, Joe Morgan, John Sheerholtz, Ozzie Smith, Joe Torrey, Al Avila, Paul Beeston, Andy McPhail, Jerry Reinsdorf, Steve Hurt, Tim Kirchin, and Claire Smith. Those 16 individuals. Um, uh, obviously, Joe Morgan is no longer going to be voting because he is no longer with us. Wet rest in peace. So they're going to need to replace him with somebody. I don't know who they're going to pick. Um, but I mean, I hate to be like this, but like that, you know, he's obviously a guy that would not have voted for Bonds and Clemens. So I'm curious to see if they replace him with someone who would have voted for them, if they replace him with someone like him. Uh, I don't know how they're going to handle that, but, you know, I th- we all know how he would have voted because he was the one that circulated the letter that caused Jeff Passan uh, to give up his vote a few years ago. Yeah. Um, the today's game era committee is, it's, you know, guys that made impacts beyond 1988, you said, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I feel like if they're doing that, especially now, they should be, you know, putting in people that played in the era beyond 1988. And I feel like if you get those guys in there, they know what the baseball culture was like. Exactly. And, um, you know, who was doing what. And, you know, like. Well, Pat Gillick was one of those guys. Like, he built a Blue Jays dynasty in 93, and he won with the Phillies in 08. Like, he was definitely uh, at his peak in that era. Yeah. Same, with, same with Greg Maddox. Uh, same with John Sheerholtz. Same with Joe Torre. Um, Yeah. Yeah, I feel like. Maddox same with Roberto is- Alomar, too. Yeah, like Maddox and probably Alomar are like guarantees to vote for Bonds and Clemens. Mm-hmm. You know, Maddox has I know spoken of spoken highly of both of them in terms yeah. of their 
skill. Uh, Kirchin, Kirchin and Claire Smith have voted for them in the past. Uh, Steve Hurt has kept his ballots private, so I don't know uh, what his, and this, I mean, this era, this committee could be completely different uh, next time. Like it could, they could do a complete wipe uh, and have 16 new individuals. So I don't know how, how exactly they're going to handle that, but that's how it was last time for reference. Yeah, and my thing, I think my takeaway from it is if you put anyone that, if you put, you know, 90% of players who played with um, Bonds and Clemens or in their era where they excelled, uh, you know, 90% of those players are going to say that they are, you know, Hall of Famers because they know what was going on in the game at that point. Um, but yeah, uh, anything more on the on the hall of fame uh 2021 um, uh, it, this is a wrap pretty much on on all of our uh hold up hold up hold up hold up hold up hold up there's no way this is real bob nightingale and take it with a grain of salt it's bob nightingale kurt schilling in letter to the hall of fame quote i will not participate in the final year of voting i am requesting to be removed from the ballot i'll defer to the veterans committee and men whose opinions actually matter and who are in a position to actually judge a player. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. This That changes the complexion of the whole conversation we just had. Wow. No, that's legit. That actually happened. That is real. Holy cow. So Kurt Schilling, not going to be on the ballot next year. No, he literally, no, dad. <laughs> that, that was what was reported. Kurt Schilling is not going to be on the Hall of Fame ballot next year, and he is going to defer to, uh, I hate to break it to you, Kurt, but you're not going to be on the Veterans Committee. You're going to be on the Today's Game Era Committee. Yeah, and... Wow. Uh, so that's okay. That's Bob Nightingale, and I gotta see. Holy cow! So that's I mean that is huge news for Bonds and Clemens because now they're going to be headlining the returners. Um, I gotta say though, in the event that Kurt Schilling does get in via today's game era committee or veterans committee. What is that? What is that ceremony going to look like? Like I cannot picture in my mind him getting on the stage in front of all those fans and getting cheers, you know, um, I can't, I, I can't picture that at this point, especially after this, like this is not going to help his popularity at all. Um, I don't know. I think he'll get a mix. I mean, uh, I mean, he has over 70% of the vote voters vote. So I don't know. It would be a mix. He'd get some booze for sure. Um, but I, I mean, a ceremony with him. Yeah, Kurt Schilling, okay. Kurt Schilling straight up like posted the whole statement on Facebook. Uh, <sighs> I don't want to read all this, but Kurt Schilling is removing himself from the ballot. That's that's the, that's a crazy bombshell. Wow. That has just occurred. I'm trying to look for the uh, thing here. Got to sign into my old Facebook account. Honestly, like... I'm kind of glad, like, I'm, I'm just, I'm exhausted having to talk about voting for him all the time. Like, I'm, I'm kind of glad we just get to move past his BBWA candidacy. Uh, I was looking, I was looking for the release of him getting inducted, but. It was bully. I mean, it could still happen via today's game era. Like, they still have an announcement for that. It's obviously not as big, but it happens. Yeah. And, you know. The plaque is the plaque. They don't have exactly. BBWA. They don't have like asterisk done by today's game era committee. Like Hall of Fame is Hall of Fame. Um, I gotta be honest. I really don't know how much. The, I don't think the today's game era 
Like that statement and the way he prefaced it is not going to help his case. The way that he just said, I want to defer to people whose opinions actually matter. Like, I don't think those people are going to take kindly to that. Even if they, even if he wasn't talking about them. Um, I don't, if anything, it would, I don't know. I don't know. But regardless, uh, Kurt Schilling will not be on the ballot next year. So, yeah, I mean, it opens up a spot on. Uh, it does, on which ballot. I'm glad for. Now I don't have to think about. Now I don't have to worry about dropping someone unless I, unless I do. I probably will have to anyway. So I'm gonna have nine, maybe eight holdovers next year. Um, I'm still kind of deciding how I'm gonna handle a rod. I know I'm gonna vote for Ortiz. Um, do you have anything else? I mean, that was, that's insane. That is so insane. And that's probably something we're never going to see again. That's a Kurt Schilling move. That's a, yeah. that's a nice. Honestly, man, up. like that, you know what? I think the BBWA is relieved. Like they don't have to talk about the character clause anymore unless it's for like Vizquel and maybe Bonds and Clemens and, and Andrew Jones who got arrested for uh, some things back in 2012. Like, and even then, it, like, I think those charges were dropped. I don't know entirely, but point is, Kurt Schilling was the main character clause factor. They don't no longer have to worry about that. And I feel like next year we get to take a more refreshing look into uh, how we judge the Hall of Fame uh, on a DBWA level. Yeah, that was a classic WWE move by Kurt Schilling. Yeah. Just going to the head bosses and saying, saying, uh, you can't fire me, I quit. Um, I'm, I'm a little bummed out. I, I wanted to see him get in through the BBWAA, and I think it probably would have happened um, next year. It probably would have happened next year. I mean, I get he did the base. He did the writer's job for them. He did, they don't have to worry about it now. So I feel like the writers aren't feeling too bad about this, even though he said their opinions don't matter. Yeah. I mean, like, I think he'll get, I, I feel like he'll get every, he, he'll get most players vote on these, you know, committees. We'll see. Play. We'll see. I don't think the players focus on the post career stuff as much, but maybe that's, uh, you know, a broad assumption, but um, like, I mean, he was obviously a great player, so they'll definitely, everyone will recognize that, um, I'm pretty sure. But yeah, wow. That's the biggest news. That's, yeah, it is. It is. I mean, if I told you 24 hours ago, this is Kurt Schilling's last year on the BBWA ballot. <laughs> I'd be, I'd be jumping and cheering. I'm like, he got I'd be like, in. He did it. <laughs> Yeah, they're just they're going over it, and I know. I oh, know. there we go! <laughs> oh my goodness! Hey, Kurt, you're not going on the Veterans Committee, buddy. First of all, that's not even the name of it, and second of all, you're going on the Today's Game Era Committee. He did say, if the, if those people don't think I'm worthy, then I'll accept that. Um, okay, so basically, he doesn't want to be voted in by writers. He wants to be inducted by players. And I, you know, so some of our favorite podcasts have done interviews with him, and he's talked about how um, his favorite honors were player voted things. I, I think he had like, um, I think he had like a, a player a players award. In like 2003 or something i'm trying to find um, i mean shilling's not going to get a chance to get elected next year uh anyway and he would have and even if he didn't get in via baseball or bbwa last year he wasn't going to have a chance he, his next chance is going to come at the same time so he's not really accomplishing much except for just making his own little statement here Good. There yeah. is because next year the Golden Days Committee and the Early Baseball Committee are voting. Kurt Schilling doesn't qualify for either of those because he did not. His peak was not before 1969. <laughs> um, yeah, Kurt Schilling. I can't believe this. I actually cannot believe this. I'm I'm bummed out about it, but it's impressive. Yeah. 
All right. Is that is that all? Is that everything? I think that's all. I mean, like, this went from uh, sort of a sort of uneventful to wow. I mean, what a what a what a crazy what a turn of events. What 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 was that? What a turn of events. I, yeah, um, yeah, especially like if he lost votes and did that, then I kind of get it because it's like yeah, that might not be as easy. But the guy, but he, but he put that out like before the election. He straight up said, "If I don't get elected tonight, regardless of what happens, I'm not doing this." Yeah, I mean, it, it might have been the final straw because yeah, like there's no one there's no big there were no big first years when i saw that nightingale tweet i had to like actually take a look to make sure it was really him i was like this seems like a like a troll tweet wow all right well uh we hope you enjoyed the hall of fame little reaction video episode 87 and a half of above replacement radio uh tomorrow or I guess I'll release this uh, Tuesday night, but Thursday we're going to be releasing. Um, we're going to re- be releasing an episode about one of Kurt Schilling's teammates, Randy Johnson, who we've covered twice on this show already through the history series. And uh, on Friday we will be talking about the 2008 Tampa Bay Rays, who broke my seven-year-old heart uh, <laughs> back. Yeah, I remember, you know. Ground. It was a ground ball. Last out was a ground ball to Aknori Iwamura, and uh, hey, I talk. We talk about him. David Price broke my broke my heart. Then so, he fixed it ten years later. Yeah, eventually, eventually he pieced it back together in uh, the second World Series I saw since that since that 2008 season. But uh, we hope you enjoyed this, and we hope to see you later this week, where we're talking history.